Welcome. This is a nice turnout for a beautifully rainy day. Thank you for coming. Um, welcome to our February program. Before I introduce Alba and Kathy, I have a little teeny bit of business, and I think the best thing to tell you to do is make sure that if you aren't on our email list, you sign up, because there's really a lot of programs in March. We've kind of overdone ourselves for March. We have a wonderful lecture series on art conservation. Two years ago, um, an organization called SciArc came and talked to us about the work that they do, and then this last year, Eric Dean, who teaches art conservation here at Scripps, gave a lecture and uh, to us at one of these talks, and it was, many people were interested, so we asked him if he would do a three lecture series with a field trip that comes the Saturday after. So if you are a member or if you've signed up on our list, you'll get an announcement of that, but if you've never gotten anything from us in the mail, sign up back there. Um, and one other thing, on Monday, February 25th, we have, uh, we traditionally visit the senior Scripps art students at their studios, and uh, you'll be notified about that too, but we get to go and talk to them, and they have a presentation, a show later in the spring, but it's very wonderful actually to have a little tea with them and to have them explain their work, and then we usually go to the show and see what has come of that. So, today we have two of our board members and really good friends. I've known Alba since she was in kindergarten, I think, or before, and Kathy not as long. And it's sort of thrilling to have not only um, artists from the local area, but our friend artists from the local area. So Alba and Kathy will be discussing their own distinctive styles and their recent collaboration on a public art piece in Pomona. Alba Cisneros is classically trained and worked over 17 years with Millard Sheets, Dennis O'Connor, and Sue Hertel, helping to complete over 80 large-scale mosaic murals for Home Savings and Loan of America. She has created numerous projects of her own, which our local communities prize and enjoy, and not just in mosaic, but stained glass, ceramics, quilted fabric panels, drawing, and other mediums. Alba is right now at work actually on a Carl Benjamin project, my dad at Mount Sac, um, turning, she's done four that were finished a year or so ago and she's doing the last four and there will be an opening for that, a celebration opening on May 3rd, which will probably be in the local press, but that's a great triumph. Kathy Garcia calls herself a folk artist, or an artist with no formal training. She began working on projects with an ecological bent 16 years ago, mainly to keep trash out of landfills. Beginning by recycling lamps and broken pottery, she then branched out to create human busts and animal figures. Kathy has participated in over 40 one-woman and group shows in the Southland, as well as some local public art projects. So without any further ado, let me introduce Alba. Do you want to come up one at a time? Is that how you can do it? Who's first? Kathy. Kathy's first. Come on up. Uh, well, I'm, I'm Kathy. And uh, I am, and just actually found out not too long ago that I was a folk artist when I was asked to participate in Dee Marcellus Cole's um, carnival show with Claremont Art Museum and uh, along with six other uh, wonderful artists. I do believe Karen is sort of classically trained, but the other, Karen Nyber, but the others of us are not. And it was a wonderful, vibrant show. And afterward, I was a little um, curious. I thought, well, I like the sound of folk music, uh, folk, folk artist, I like it, um, but I wonder if I should Google it and see if it fits. And you know, it really did, really did fit. Um, one thing I found was that folk art was considered low art rather than high art, and it was meant for the masses, which I feel I relate to. Uh, the second is it's pretty inexpensive to do. It's, in, I suppose in the old days, if you had a piece of wood or a lump of clay, 
um, or, or you could save all your recycled clothes and make a wonderful quilt. It was something people could do that didn't require uh, sending to Italy for the tesserae and, you know, just expensive stuff. So the other thing was um, it can address social issues, which, as um, Beth said in my introduction, I, I do worry about ecology. I do worry about the landfills. So uh, that was something high on my, on my uh, mind. The, and I think the fourth thing is it's utilitarian, which means it can be useful. It doesn't just have to be ornamental. It can be useful. So um, here, here is just uh, a rooster that I made. It's, it's in our backyard. Um, the reason I picked it was it seemed kind of folkish, number one. And number two, I was excited because I finally found out what to do with the bottom of plates. I found that the plate bottoms could make wonderful quills or hair. It would give a wonderful flowing texture to give the piece of movement, which I found later that was pretty cool. So this is um, our kitchen. And as far as utilitarian goes, a folk artist being utilitarian, um, we, we live in a house that was built in 1965. And between Frank and I, we had five kids and numerous dogs. So the, our house was just rough. And so we looked, we heard everybody was getting granite countertops and these Italian marble floors and whatever. And so I told Frank, who just came in, and he's very supportive of me. He's, I said, you know, let me just try some stuff. I have all this tile people give me. Let me just try some stuff. We're going to redo it anyway. If it looks awful, we'll just trash it out. And so he said, OK, let's do it. So you can see that I did uh, the backsplash on the sink, the tile, um, the floor, which is just a conglomeration of all sorts of tile I had, a, a recycled lamp there. And then we have Frida, who rules over the kitchen. And I probably didn't even spend $100 to do all that. So this, um, this is kind of the slide where I'm going to tell you what to do, if you're interested in doing this at all. Um, my supplies, well, I, I'm self-taught. So I didn't really know what, to do, what I was doing. Um, and if you're self-taught, you have to do a lot of trial and error on what works and what doesn't work. So when I thought about gluing something, I just thought about tile mastic, because of course we all walk on the tile floors and they stay there. So, uh, and then grout, um, and then cement glue, which I was found was really handy to keep the grout hard rather than powdering off later on. Um, and then a pair of nippers there. Um, when I first started, I had all this pottery and I put it in a pillow sheet, pillowcase and hammered it, and then dumped it out. And then I had to, it took so long to figure out what to do with it um, that I thought, this is just crazy. I, I have to be more in control of the shapes that I get. So uh, I learned how to use nippers. And thank goodness that I don't have arthritis yet. But, um, and I, I just sort of found my own style. I found that I liked less grout. I liked things to fit tighter. So it was really important to have the nippers to kind of puzzle them in together. Uh, when I first started, I thought, well, what, you know, what am I going to do? I mean, what am I going to, what surface am I going to use? Because uh, I thought about some kind of a board, which I found later, do not use wood because it shrinks and expands in the heat and cold. <laughs> that was a trial and error. And then, but, um, and I thought, well, if I did something you know, on a piece of cement board or something, I'd have to get a frame, and then it could be really heavy. I'd have to figure out how to hang it. And it just seemed overwhelming. So I was looking for surfaces. And when I was perusing Goodwill and such, I would feel so sad to see all these lamps in the Goodwill. Because to me, nothing signals coming home and a warm feeling than to see the golden light of a lamp with a shy, you know, a, an old shade or whatever. It just looks welcoming to me. And I would see all these lamps, and I thought, 
they were in people's houses. They have heard so many conversations, witnessed so much, and they look so rough that I just feel like I need to rescue some. For, and they were like 5 or $6 in those days. I don't really know. Goodwill is going up a lot. So uh, anyway, you can see the one in the middle is one that's still waiting to be rejuvenated. So here I am in the studio, um, which is, you can see there's a bicycle there. It's not a really professional <laughs> studio that day anyway. Uh, this is a lamp. Uh, someone gave me two of these, actually, and they were so ugly. They were like a turquoise glass, and then it had like a brass around the bottom, but it was water spotted and brown. It just looked terrible. So I thought, well, I, you know, what I have to lose. So I actually finished, what I did was I finished the white, grouted it in black, which is sort of my signature grout. I just like black because it just really pops. And then I painted the brass a flat black and a black shade. And to this day, I have both those lamps in the laundry room, and I, I just like them a lot. Uh, these, I don't know if you remember, probably in the 80s, when uh, the Asian decorating style was in and the Southwest. It was sort of in that era there where there were a lot of standing lamps. And boy, what a big surface, you know, to paste on. It's so big that uh, I was scouring all over for some, for some of those. And this, this one is in a, there's another layer going down, but I just sort of did birds, the ocean with fish, and then flowers at the bottom. So that was just fun. Um, after, I, I probably made 50 lamps. And by the, I was just ready to step it up a little bit. <laughs> so I uh, found uh, these two statues in downtown Pomona in an antique store. They had been outside. They were pitted. The bases were chipped off. They weren't really stable. And someone had painted Apollo black and painted uh, Aphrodite. I'm not really, I hesitate to talk at a college because I'm not real sure on Grecian or Roman art. So I just make up names. To me, this is like either Venus or Aphrodite and Apollo. I don't know if they are. So uh, I was very intimidated. Number one, because they're such beautiful art pieces. I didn't want to mess them up, number one. I wanted them to come out beautiful, or I had to make them really funky, you know, just goofy. Uh, so I wasn't too sure what to do. But the first thing I did was I did the base, because I, I knew how to do that. <laughs> and then I started looking around for flesh-colored pottery, which is harder than you would think, because I don't think it's very appetizing to eat off maybe a flesh-colored plate. <laughs> so I, I had a, a challenge, you know, doing that. So here they are completed, and it probably took me a year, because not only was I going smaller with the nippers, but also because the pottery was such different thicknesses that the thicker ones I had to uh, clip to, I mean, I had to do an extra clip to make them thinner. So uh, it took a long time, and I have to... I just agonized over the breasts. I think I was going up and I was like, oh my gosh, you know, what is a good nipple color? What, you know, how am I going to do this? So this is one that was also at the Claremont Art Museum show. Uh, I put her in here because uh, I just thought it was fun that my hairdresser asked me if I could use a box of broken talavera dishes. And so I said, yeah, I really would. So I designed the sundress out of her uh, Talavera dishes. And then just some of the things that I, some of the other um, people that I have done, uh, you know, I try to do just like quirky things. So this, the earrings are like gold Easter eggs. Uh, I mean, salt shakers, anyway, that I put on for, East, for the earrings. And then just a, a random beautiful flower I found. Uh, this, this is, we call him pensando, which means thinking in Spanish. Um, we, I found him, he was a, 
yard ornament made out of terracotta. But at the time, he had a big sombrero over the top. And as I talked to my husband, Frank, he said, you know, that statue is really, really hard for the Latino community. You know, and I totally think there is not a more hardworking uh, bunch of people. So we decided to take the sombrero off. That's gone. And we, I put a random head in there that I, that I uh, had found. And this, um, this is showing at the Doss Center of the Art, which has been very encouraging in my career. The first lamp I ever sold was to Sandy Baldonado at the Simply Red Show. And so if you have, if you're an artist and you want to get started and show your work, the DA has two or three open shows a year. For $25, you can show your piece in a very beautiful setting, uh, very professional. Uh, this is another yard ornament I found. He is made out of fiberglass, I believe. And he came from the Southwest era, too. And I looked at him, and I thought, he really needs to be cuted up. He looked pretty rough. Um, so I was demonstrating at the fair. And so this was my project. And here he is back at the DAW. This slide I just put in because I miss Juan and Susie at the Bunny Gunner so much. <laughs> And they gave me a show um, where I featured my lamps. I had to replace a number of them because they really sold well. And then at the end of the show, Susie said, would you lend me a lamp to keep in our, on our counter just so there's a nice light in there in the, in the nighttime? So that was fun, you know, to go to the village and see that lamp in the window. Um, this... A uh, piece I found at Treasures and Junk, and this was um, another fiberglass piece. He was all white, and uh, so I brought him home. At that time, I had been asked to be in the Maloof Garden Show, so it was a good project for me to start on, but it ended up being very heavy. Oh, my gosh, very heavy. Um, so I used two of my favorite colors, turquoise and uh, cobalt blue, in that. And um, the hoofs were some tile given to me by Alba, which are uh, silver. So she has silver hoofs. Uh, this one is Walter. He uh, was at the Arboretum for their garden show. And so I loved Walter. Frank and I did. And we wanted, we had every intention to bring him home. I was really excited that he was able to be with the peacocks all night and all that beauty. But... Even though we put a $4,000 price tag on him, thinking we'd bring him home, it sold the first night to a donor, and they whisked him off. So he didn't even get to stay at the show. So here's a picture of his little head. <laughs> and finally, um, this is my last slide. I was asked by Joey at, at Nuno's to uh, design their pizza oven. And they are Portuguese, of course, and they asked me to have a Portuguese theme, which I have never been to Portugal, but I would love to. I hear they have whole tile buildings. So uh, they told me it, we had to have the Portuguese lucky rooster with the feathers facing toward the door because that is luck. There's a wonderful story to that, but I'm not going to tell you because I'm not sure if I have it exactly right. And uh, Joey's mom gave me some pieces uh, to, from Portugal that she brought over to put into the piece, and which I think is kind of fun, you know, to really personalize it. Um, and you can, I brought a lamp, and you can see what you can do with your knickknacks to make them much easier to dust. You just glue them onto something, <laughs> and then you just make one, one swipe. So uh, I think my time's up, so I'm going to hand over the microphone to my friend Alba. Okay, so <laughs> I was saying to Kathy that I thought it was sort of interesting that she's folk and I was classic, and yet her busts to me look so classic. So we're, we're sort of switching here or whatever. But um, anyways, as 
Beth had said, um, I worked in the Miller Cheats studio for 17 years, and this morning I was thinking, I wonder how long I've actually been doing this, and I calculated 44 years I've been cutting this tile. It's crazy. I didn't, real, I didn't realize it was that long, so it was crazy. Anyway, um, so this is the very, very first mosaic that I ever worked on, and this was in the little studio next to the Miller Cheat studio up on Foothill, which is now, the, or has been for years, is the eye doctor, uh, Dr. McDermott. And so for the very first thing, I did lettuce. I was very excited to do lettuce. And then I did some of the, the background things, and then I was able to do some pants, and I was petrified, because I, I, I was working at the bakery at the time. I had just come back from Alaska, and they said, needed help, and I thought, well, why not? So I worked in the Jensen's Bakery for a while, but Dennis O'Connor kept coming in to buy bread. He'd come in every, I was, I was only there for two weeks, and I said, you know, I've always wanted to work in the studio, and he said, well, why don't you come up? So I did, so I, that's how I started working in the studio, was just bringing him bread, you know, it was crazy. <laughs> crazy how we hook up with people in this town, but. So this is a home savings loan that is down in Balboa in the San Diego area. This is one end of the building, and that's the other end of the building. And this is a Sue Hertel design. And um, most of the buildings that um, Miller Cheats designed had this travertine that was on the outside. And I'll show you another slide coming up, but this was a later um, mural that we did and you can see it's just cut out. The whole thing is a uh, big square or rectangle. And it's filled with broken up pieces of travertine. So when you're standing away from it, it almost looks like all those pieces are cut into the building, which they're not. But this one, which I think is Fremont, I can't, uh, you work on 80 of them. And you stare at these things for six months, eight months. You know, you just wanted to get them out the door and you never want to see them again. But I love them, though, actually, when they go up. But here's a close-up. Back in the day when they spent a lot of money, these are all cutouts in the travertine. And the pieces that we're putting in here, I'll show you in a minute, but these are all done backwards. So you have a piece of paper, you do your design, you put carbon paper, paper on the floor, you layer it all up, and everything is done backwards. So you end up with a piece like this. This is then grouted on this side, turned around, and put into a frame. So the other one, you know, had the, it was a cutout on the building, but these were all cut out. So you're taking, pieces that are backwards, putting the grout on this side, and then putting them into the wall. So keeping track of all of these pieces and where they go was just insane. But um, anyway, that's how we did a lot of the... So that's the reverse method. So it's a lot more difficult than you think it is. I've got some examples up here. but So this is Northridge, and... Um, we had trouble with Monty Montana over here because <laughs> Sue put that in there and the family of Monty Montana was very upset because they were not asked if they could. So there was a big lawsuit about whether that we were gonna rip Montana off the wall or whatever. I was really bummed because I did a lot of this part and I thought, oh my God, what are we gonna replace Monty Montana with? And he used to always be in the, the parade every year. So I thought it was kind of nice that he was on the wall, but <laughs> in the parade. <laughs> yes. So this is one in Riverside, and years after, I forget what, what year this was that we did this, but years after Millard had passed, I was going through Riverside with a friend, and I just happened to look over the corner of my eye, and here was this particular... Um, mosaic on the home savings, and it's one of my favorite. I, I love it because it's so stylized. There was a big banner hanging across the front of it, mattress sale. Oh. 
And I thought Millard was up there just, you know, just, uh, that was horrible. I could not believe that, that the bank had turned into a mattress store. And that's happened to a lot of the, of the buildings, and I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with um, Adam Aronson, who did the book, who did all the research. He thought he was just going to do a little map of Southern California and spot where all the different banks were. Seven years later, he did this book. It's a beautiful book. Um, and it has all in the whole process and all the architects and all the artists involved and all the years and how all the banks were done here in Southern California and then Washington and Chicago and Florida and the whole, he's got the whole history, um, which is really nice. It's nice to have your legacy in a book that somebody else did. Yes, yes. I, Claremont, Claremont Art Museum. Yes. You're welcome. And this is Torrance. This is another Sioux Hotel. This is Tahunga. I love the cutout ones, but they, they just got more and more expensive. They were too, too expensive to do. And this is, this was a little one. This goes out to Coronado. And I wanted to point this out to my, my dear friend, Patricia Tuvey. Do you recognize this Volkswagen bus right here? <laughs> We used to have sort of matching Volkswagen buses, and mine was about ready to hit the skid. So I thought, well, we'll just take it out, you know, take it out on the ferry and just push it off the end. But <laughs> so I think this is Westminster, and I'm sorry this slide is so funky, but um, these were also Sioux hotels. But Millard had also done a lot of birds over the years, so a lot of her dis her stuff was designed in his style to begin with, but then she did a lot of her own. But a lot of this is mirror. So a lot of it, you can't really see in this slide, but a lot of these are mirrors, and like the blue, that's all mirror. So when you're, when you're actually gluing these things down, you have blue glass on the front and black on the back, but when you put glue on the front of the piece, you're gluing it down so you're looking at black. So keeping track of what you're doing can get pretty, <laughs> pretty crazy. Those were fun to do. So here are some of my projects. They're just real quick ones. And obviously, I couldn't or have yet to do any of the projects on the Miller Cheats size. I would love to someday, but I, you know, I'd need to get other people to help me with it. But these are just some of the projects that I've done. Um, this was at a house in or is in a house in Claraboya, and it's on Guernavaca Street. And one of um, one of Claremont's sister cities is Guernavaca. So this is Big Bridges. I didn't get the whole thing in here, but this is Big Bridges, which I sort of feel is like like our you know cathedral, if you will. And that one's the one that's in Guernavaca. And it had it did have. I don't. I'm sorry. I don't have the whole slide all the way across, but there are copper leaves. There were three copper leaves at the top, and water would come out and hit the leaves, and then the water would run down the front, and it went into a copper um, bin that we had down at the bottom, and then the water would recycle back up. And this is just the end of a, a fireplace um, of a house over in West Covina. It was just one of the clients when I used to work for a landscape architecture company. It was always fun to throw in you know, a bird bath or a drinking fountain or a spa or something. So that's just one of theirs. This is, I don't think Holly's here. Oh, yeah, that's right. She's on a trip. Holly Beckner, who's one of our board members, um, this is her sister. And this was at her wedding. And she asked me to do a mosaic of this photograph. And I thought, are you kidding me? Cutting these teeny weeny, these are little tiny, tiny little pieces. And I thought, well, I'll just do a negative of it. So it's just the negative and then her one pearl earring. I thought that was fun. How big is that that you just About like that. And this is just one of three. I did a triptych for um, a friend of mine over in Laverne. She just had specific things that she wanted in it. She, there's another one that has the yellow slide from the fair. They're just, just funny things that she wanted. And a lot of 
lot of people, a lot of you know this one. This was at Pilgrim Place. <laughs> and thanks to Gail, who, Gail and I met at a luncheon here, and she says, I'm the, you know, she was introducing herself, and she says, I'm the new president, at, or will be the new president at Pilgrim Place. And I just kiddingly said to her, I have a bone to pick with you. And she looked at me, and I said, I did this mosaic over at Pilgrim Place. And she said, oh, you're the one that did that. And it was done in 1986, and it was now, I don't know, 2006 or something? It was, anyway, she said, well, as soon as I become president, we'll get on that. I forgot all about it. I get this email out of nowhere. Come on, let's do this. So next thing I know, she has me, you know, they put a plaque up and everything. It, it was amazing. It was, so the plaque is actually up saying who did this. People have been walking by it for years and said they really enjoyed it, but they had no idea who did it. So that was nice. These are seven feet, seven feet high. And this, this slide is kind of old, but I, I tried to sort of have a soji screen thing, but this, it, I don't know, it's pretty faded, but I need to do a lot of new photos. Um, this was a design that Millard um, used a lot in some of his uh, banks that he did. And this was taken off, he had two 12 foot, I think they were 12 foot wooden doors that he found in Mexico. He took them up to his house in Galala. So these were wood, they were his front doors. So he thought, why not take this design and turn it in mosaic? So these are all like those other birds. A lot of them have metallics and golds. This is all gold. These are copper, and some of them are silver in there. And that went along with the very first um, mosaic I'd ever worked on in Encino. And as we were leaving, uh, we, we had put these up, and they'd been up for a while, and then we came back and we stained all of the grout in here, which took hours going around all these little details just to stain it so it would stand out a little bit more. And Brian, who I was working at the time, and I know a lot of you know Brian, who worked in the studio for years, um, I said, hang on just a second. He goes, okay. So I walked, up to, I walked up to the teller and I said, hey, how do you like the, the mosaics in the back of the bank? And she turned around and she said, that's the nicest looking wallpaper I've ever seen. <laughs> I remember just going, okay. So she was serious. Oh, yeah. So Brian looked at my, this funny look on my face, I guess, and he says, what did she say? So I told him, told him what she said, and he says, well, that's why you're an artist and she's in the bank, which I felt kind of bad about. <laughs> but... So this was one taken from those, that same design. Millard had back surgery years and years ago, and he had me do this as a present to his surgeon. And Beth's giving me the two minute. This was one that um, Dennis took that same design and turned it into a circle, but this piece had been sitting out in the desert in the rain for years and years and years, and it was cracked. So I'm in the process of of fixing, the, I mean, it's fixed now, but the slide was taken when I was in the middle of restoring it. And then this is just a rendering. This is my brother after we finished putting all of this together. And these were um, pads. He did the welding and everything for the pads. And when this is turned on, you actually have water coming up out of the top of this. And then this is the side. All the water goes up that middle part and this is all out of copper, and all the copper comes out and lands in the water that's down below. And this is just working on a, um, a bird one, which some of you might know if you know Janet Myrie. And these are some of the tiles that I used for. I'm going to go through these real quick. Um, this is the one that's up on baseline. But right here you can see I'm... I'm you can't really tell the, which side is which of the um, tile, but I'm just gluing everything down onto the paper, and that's when it's done. And then they were putting it in there. That was scary. <laughs> Don't drop it. So here's an empty frame. Here's my brother putting a, a bed of cement in the frame, and then it's all done. And I'm missing the, the slide that's right in between that shows 
um, the back of the paper, so it would be this part. And like Kathy was saying, she had to clip some of her tile because it stuck up too high. Doing it backwards like this, you can put all kinds of different sizes of tile on your paper because you're doing it face down. So when you flip it, you pack it in there and you take the paper and you pull it off once it gets wet and then it's flat. That's why it's done that way. And there's just a, that's just a sample of one of those. So this is the one that Beth was talking about. These four are already up at Mount Sac and I'm doing the other four. They will, they're done but they have to be set and then we'll put them up there. And then this is the one that Kathy and I both did together. Okay, so this was a project for um, Tri-City, and this is down on Holt. If you go straight down Indian Hill and you make a right on Holt and go west, there's the old um, Beacon Storage Building. If anybody remembers that, this is just to the east of this. So it was a brand new apartment building that went in. It was for um, homeless people coming in and... and um, moving into the apartments and they have people that are on site to help them set up bank accounts and you know just, just get them going again. So this was the entryway. And I did a couple of different designs um, and they like this one. So it's sort of a, to me, you have the, the citrus which is lemon from Claremont and the oranges from Pomona so I thought I'd combine them so these are the orange groves and lemon groves going up and then morphing into one of those ceramic folk art trees. So I thought it was kind of nice with both of us with the folk lady here. And <laughs> so these are sample boards that, um, that Kathy did so we could sort of let them know what we were doing, you know, kind of what it was going to look like. We had to get uh, approval from the Pomona Art Commission, so we had to make a little presentation. I think we had to go back two times. I think so, yeah. Chris Tuvey back there was part of this. <laughs> this actually, speaking of Chris Tuvey, this is in Da um, Gallery in downtown Pomona, and they were so gracious. They were the ones that um, gave us this job, put all of the people concerned, put all the people together to be able to do this. So we're using their floor, and we were using their kiln, and uh, you know, using their facilities to pull this together. So this this is a blown up. This is when we're drawing it out full scale. It was the first time I, I usually fly by the seat of my pants, so <laughs> I didn't know how much pre-planning would go into this, but obviously we had to blow up Alba's design on the wall and trace it. Then we had to put carbon paper under to do the mirror side because it was... A, and not to mention all the problems of the arch yeah, and yeah. How, how it would come together in separate pieces. Would it fit? A lot of measuring. We couldn't start this until they made a template of what that arch was going to be. There was no way to do this until they made that arch. So here we are upstairs at Da, and we had... Um, they had clients come in that, that some of them might possibly be people, clients that would be living in these apartment buildings. They were, were, they were supposed to be all kids, but we only ended up with a couple of kids and all the moms, so we made all the moms sit down, and the guy sitting next to Kathy over there, he's the van driver. Sit down, you're gonna make some stuff with us. So, And this is Gary Letts, he was showing us how to, um, use the kiln and whatnot, which was really, really handy. And he's done a lot of work with Foothill Country Day. Beautiful, beautiful um, work with them. Part of the uh, stipulation that the housing project people said is they wanted the residents to feel like they had a part in it. That was why we had to, um, it was a, just a real compilation of all different sorts of things that we had to fit in. And so they cut out birds and leaves and some, some petals. horses. There were a couple of uh, fish in there. They, yeah. they just all So they of could different. feel good going into the entry and seeing things they might have done. A couple of these ladies actually ended up in the book 
that these people did. I've got a copy of it up here on the front. And it was so nice to be able to hand this book over to the mother on the left and say, here, this is for you. And she didn't know what she was looking at. And I said, just, just look through it. So she looked through it, and she got to her page. I still get goosebumps. She just sat there and looked at it. She showed it to her daughter, and she started crying. This whole project was worth that, seeing the look on her face. So here is a bunch of the uh, ceramic tile that I've just glazed. And then here's the, I'm talking way too much. You jump in here, Kathy. <laughs> well, we took our, we took the, uh, you saw that last tray of the beautiful pieces. We laid them out on, on the design, on the paper. We thought we had tons. We thought we had plenty. But you can look at how sparse it was. <laughs> So here's inside my studio, and I, um, I think I had just finished. That's the middle piece of everything, but my studio was clean, so I just took a picture and <laughs> included it. But this is when we were actually um, working on the project. So these are just a couple of slides in, in my studio, and oh, I wanted to point this out. Kathy and I worked in two different studios, and how we would do the designs back and forth is we had this, this nylon grid, and we'd lay it on top of the design, and each of us would do our part, and then I could take my pieces to her house and match them up. I think the next slide has that on it. So we went back and forth and back and forth, and it was great whenever it was my turn to go to Kathy's house. Her husband would go out and get us lunch. It was great. <laughs> I always liked going to her house. I'm sorry? How big were those squares? Um, the tallest one is, a, I think it's three and a half feet. I know it's hard to get a scale on this. You'll see in a minute that, and this is in Kathy's studio. See her wonderful floor? She has a floor like this in her laundry room. You walk in and that's, you know, it's so cool. <laughs> They're going to think I have a fetish about that. <laughs> yes. These are direct, so we're gluing each piece on there. Although, like I said, we would put it on the mesh, and then we could take it to the other person's studio. This is on cement board. Yeah. So here we are laying it out in this in the studio, just trying to get the background going. So the background the back background is varied, and we didn't want to make it all the same. So, and then we had this interesting little deal. After we were done with the whole panel, we were told that they were going to put these up with bolts, and they were going to go through the tile. So there's 16 panels. There's four bolts for each panel in each corner. So we had to rip out our work. I was not a happy camper. Kathy was very, it's OK, we'll get through this. So that's what it would look like with the bolt in there. So 3 o'clock in the morning, I'm lying there just thinking, how the hell are we going to cover these things? Because the bolts were sticking up higher than the tile. And I thought, I am not going to get up on, I was pissed, I'm not getting up on that scaffolding and do each one of those. I'm not going to tile around it. Ah. Oh. <laughs> I took a bolt and just put it in the back side of the clay. Just put the, the head of the bolt in there. Ah, okay. So that's what we ended up doing. So, so this, is, this isn't grouted yet, but as you can see, and there's another slide in here, um, Kathy's signature black grout is in here, but not the background. So she, it's a long process. She painstakingly went through and grouted all of the color pieces, and the background is all done in gray grout. So that was two separate, yeah, here she is. So she masked off the background and did all the black grouting in there. That took forever. And here we are putting it up. Here are the guys. There's Chris Tooby helping my roommate Frank put it up. That was a long day, but it was so worth it. <laughs> it was hot. It was really hot. <laughs> so here's our team. Yay, team. We're done. 
so you can see, you guys will know, other people won't know. All these little extra colored dots just for fun. <laughs> So that's a detail. That's the other side with the lemon. So that's the Claremont side. And then this was with Chris Tuvey. This was the opening, and this was with Chris Tuvey, who was so kind to let us use the, the doll along with Margaret, who's the director down there. And this was Meredith. She was the lady that coordinated all of the different people putting all of this together. She was great. She was great to work with. <laughs> oh, so this was the ribbon cutting, and we had a lot of dignitor dignitaries, said dignitaries, dignitaries. <laughs> notorious dignitaries here. <laughs> so we had Norma Torres come out and, and cut uh, the ribbon. We had the mayor of Pomona. Uh, we also had Miguel Santana from the fair, So and various other city council people there. So there we are cutting the ribbon. That was fun. We, they had a whole big to-do. It was kind of neat. So I made... With the leftover stuff that we had, they needed plaques, and I said, well, let me, let me use the leftover stuff. So these were individual plaques that we did for all of them. And then the, plaques they, the plaque they did for us, this was, this was stolen. So it's not on the wall anymore. So Kathy and I are gonna go down with spray cans and just tag it. <laughs> so anyway, thank you, that's, that's oh, oh, wait, wait, wait. You wanted to tell about... Oh, well, I just said, <laughs> if, if we have a few minutes, I would just like to say how wonderful it was to work with Alba. As you could tell, our styles were so different, and then we had to incorporate the community element also, but from Alba is so left-brained, right-brained. Uh, she's such a wonderful artist, but she knows the measurements. She knows the architecture. She knows how to mount it. She knows... All those things that I really, I didn't really know. So I learned a lot from her. It was wonderful. And I learned a lot from Kathy because I was so used to doing the real straight, you know, okay, this is what Sue has lined up. This is, these are the tiles, the colors you're going to use. Even though we had free reign as far as how we were going to cut things and whatnot, Sue and Millard were really the ones, and Dennis, were the ones that you know did the colors and whatnot, even though we had a design that we would work from. But it was so nice to work with Kathy because everything was just direct and I could just have fun and just do it. And it was just like, yay! You know, I didn't have to... Because after you finish one of the really big mosaics, doing the, the setting of it is a real pain. That's a, that's a, so doing her father's work, which I'm about ready to do the last four, I'm not looking forward to that part, but once that part is done, Yay! So anyway, thank you very much. <laughs> Anybody have any questions? I have one. Okay. What are you giving classes? Okay. <laughs> she, the same lady asked me this, Caroline. Um, I, I don't know. Years ago, I was in another studio, and I had a bigger studio, and I had a lot of room, and I have since moved and I don't know but at some point I will and I will let somebody know. I also wanted to tell you that um, I have some reverse things that I did and I didn't even know it. <laughs> I didn't know it until today. I mean you answered my prayers. You said these are uh, really a pain. They were a pain. And, but I have a bench that sits by the pond that is a reverse of what, anyway, what it started out to be. Yeah. That's how all of the home savings and loan banks were done, were in reverse. In fact, the, the, the very first slide that I had, they had a template because they would usually cut out of the building. You didn't have frames. They would cut it out of the building. The very f That particular one, the template was not reversed. So we get there, and the tile setter starts to put things in and realizes this is not fitting. So they had to go in and actually cut out part of the building, and then we had to make extra pieces to go in. I mean, it worked out fine. You'd never know that. but. That did happen on occasion. And I'm dyslexic, so you know, keeping what, what's front, what's back, what's left, what's right, it, it's, you know. 
Thank you, Sycamore, for helping me through that. <laughs> Any other questions? Okay. Um, when, how long ago was the ribbon cutting for the project down on Hope and your um, uh, your work on Baseline and Across Street in Claremont, the, the uh, Lemons? Where is, what, what's that Cross Street? It's Baseline and Monta Vista. Once it hits Baseline, it turns into Padua. Used to be Padua all the way up, but it's right on the corner there. It's Pitzer Ranch Apartments or condos rather. And that was done in 2014. And, and then the ribbon cutting was last year, last year in May. Yeah. Yeah. My question was the timeline. How long did it take for this project to go from a board saying yes to being made? How kind of a time span? A long time. It's it's strange if you're going through. Um, it depends if you're going through the city or whatnot, and you have to jump through all of their hoops. You have to go to the city council meetings. You have to go to art council meetings. It depends. Um, the ones that we used to do for home savings and loan, Millard pretty much just had free reign with those. But then when Dennis took over after Millard had retired, even though Millard still came back and forth in the studio, we, you know, it, it, it depended on the size and whether we had the colors in the studio. And you can come up and look at these, but these are some of the boards that we had in the studio office. And these are all, all from Italy. So I call this my frosting. And then the, the square Venetian stuff is the cake. So I, I save, <laughs> I've got hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of cans of the stuff from Italy, because this is really expensive. And this is made by, um, it's like a big pancake. You pour out all the glass, so you end up with it like a great big pancake. So that's the side of it. And this is edge right there so imagine a whole circle of this and then they go through and they cut everything but you use it on the side like that so sometimes you might have orange on the top and the bottom and red in the middle so it's kind of nice because you you get different you know different sides and different colors and then some of the some of the venetian ones have different colors on different sides which is nice but anybody else sure uh, this question is for uh, Kathy, and you have this wonderful event that you do with your uh, husband every year up at the house where you invite artists and you can see your pieces in their natural surrounding, and tell us a little bit about that, if you will. Well, uh, we, we used to have a return to Otsland show, barbecue at our house, but actually we retired this year. <laughs> we, did, we had the barbecue at, at the Daw. But uh, we, we did enjoy having people at our house, often 100 people. And Chris Tuvey did the barbecuing. He never got away from the grill. But, uh, but actually, I, I was asked to have our house on the uh, Claremont Heritage Home Tour, I think in October. So if anybody would like to come, they're certainly welcome to buy a ticket. Their house is wonderful. There's mosaics everywhere, outside, on the walls, in the bathrooms, on the laundry room floor. <laughs> it's beautiful. Thank you. I, I have one more okay. question, and it's for Kathy, because I, I know a little bit more about all this background. But you're self-taught. How did you teach yourself the sense of proportion and design? It's one thing to learn to cut the tiles and put them down. But I, I noticed in your pictures that you have a really good sense of where to place your larger pieces and some of your smaller. How did you develop that? Well, uh, well number one, I think if you, oh, if you do something long enough, you're going to get better. I mean, I think everybody is gonna, could be great at something if they put enough time into it. I did feel like, um, after a while I started, I'd just like to see some movement in the piece. It's very hard to 
get movement in something flat. So I would try to do a little swirling or whatever. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't know. It's very nice of you to say that. I do know I always liked interior design. I, I like color. I like, you know, I think you could be, have a lot of interest, but this just grabbed me somehow. Do go on the tour. Her house is absolutely worth it. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you. And do come up and look at the different tiles and whatnot if you'd like to.